Hello, I'm Rob Wainfro and welcome to this special report for Coffee with Kenobi. Just over a month ago I set up an online poll to find out the best Star Wars video game. Well, you've been voting and we've had over 800 votes. So here is the top 10 rundown of the best Star Wars video games as voted by you the fans. Scraping in at number 10 is one of my favourites, the original Star Wars Arcade Machine. Released in 1983 by Atari, this classic machine came in two formats, the upright version and the best, the sit-down version. Sporting yoke controls, your job was to destroy the Death Star by first fending off TIE Fighters, destroying towers on the surface and then of course, the trench run. Using vector graphics, the game still looks beautiful even today and the frantic action John Williams music and samples from the movie make this a worthy entry in our top 10. I searched the temple archives. This Force user leading the Flesh Raiders never received Jedi training. Next on our list, Star Wars The Old Republic. Now it's rumoured it cost around $200 million to make, making it one of the most expensive games ever made at the time of release in December 2011. Developed by Bioware who brought us classics such as Mass Effect and Dragon's Age, they brought their magic to Star Wars with a massively multiplayer online RPG. Taking place more than three and a half thousand years before the movie, the game allows you, as most Bioware games do, to take two paths. In the case of Star Wars The Old Republic, those two paths are Sith or Jedi. The game boasts some incredible opening scenes and any Star Wars fan should watch these, even if you're not a gamer. The game is now free to play and worth it just to soak up the atmosphere on Coruscant. Definitely recommended. You assumed no force could challenge you. And now... Finally, we have returned. In at number 8, as voted by you, is a space combat game that puts you in the seat of an X-Wing. Set a few months before A New Hope, X-Wing by LucasArts stormed onto PC and made gamers rush out and buy a decent joystick. I can't shake him. I'm on it. Nice shot, Red 2. Fans embraced the game as it took a more serious approach replicating the popular flight simulators in the time. You helped the Rebel Alliance by completing various missions such as salvaging, escorting ships and of course classic dogfights. An updated version is available on GOG.com with improved graphics and audio so definitely worth checking out. J. 
Sheen, get down! There's stormtroopers in the clearing. Maybe you should, uh, check it out. You're the one with the lightsaber, after all. Number seven in our list is the 2003 Raven software developed Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, a first and third person shooter and powered by the Quake 3 Team Arena game engine. The player takes control of the character Jaden Kaur, a student at the Jedi Academy, under the wing of Kyle Katan. The player must complete various missions assigned to them by Katan and Luke Skywalker. Multiplayer was also present with all the classic modes such as Capture the Flag and Siege. Players could play on their own or as a team. Number 6 sees another space combat game focused this time more on multiplayer. Released in 1997, Star Wars X-Wing vs TIE Fighter was the third installment in the X-Wing series. The game boasted huge step forwards in graphics and sound over X-Wing, boasting a CD audio soundtrack, high resolution graphics and able to run in a Windows environment. The game focused on multiplayer ditching a storyline and instead allowing up to 8 players for the first time to fight against each other in the Star Wars environment. For those players who were craving a single player storyline however, could get one with a future expansion pack called the Balance of Power. Interdictor Compella, keep that cruiser from escaping. This is Captain Rigel, our gravity well projectors are powering up and will be online in two minutes. Captain Rigel. Join with Battle Group Orion. Pursue and destroy that cruiser. Yes, sir. My first day as a member of the 501st. It was hot. It was sandy. Chaotic. Nothing at all like the simulations on Camino. Of course, that's pretty much the way it was for all of us, wasn't it? All that breeding, all those years of training. It doesn't really prepare you for all the screaming or the blood, does it? Frankly, I'm still amazed we ever made it through the first hour. Never mind the first day. Developed by Pandemic Games, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is an open-ended multiplayer game set in various Star Wars scenarios. Imagine having a room full of Star Wars figures and toys and a group of you split into two or more teams and the object is to beat the other team. That kind of gives you an idea of what the gameplay is like in Battlefront 2. You can reenact some of the most memorable scenes from the Star Wars movies. Droid scouts have been detected in the area. Take them out before they can report our position. The second incarnation of Battlefront has an improved single player experience, spanning 12 locations, and space combat is also available for the first time. Online battles could be intense where you could have up to 24 players on the PlayStation 2, 32 on the Xbox and 64 on the PC. The new Battlefront which is out next year is one of the most anticipated game releases of the year. The updated graphics look incredible and every Star Wars fan is hoping it's going to be as good as it looks.
be in the sequel to X-Wing, TIE Fighter also makes it onto our list. This time, instead of fighting with those rebel scum, you get to pilot an Imperial TIE Fighter completing missions. The game takes place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. The original game sees you preventing a plot to kill the Emperor, and in the expansion packs you get to follow a whole story featuring Admiral Thrawn. The game begins with you piloting an unshielded TIE Fighter making the game more challenging than X-Wing. However, as you progressed you gained access to advanced machinery with better armament and weaponry. The game was released in 1994, 17 months after X-Wing, and sported updated shaded graphics. A CD-ROM version was also released with SVGA graphics and voiceovers. As with X-Wing, an updated version is available on GOG.com. Knights of the Old Republic 2 was released for Windows PCs and the original Xbox back in 2004 and 2005. Taking place five years after the original Knights of the Old Republic, you play a character that has been exiled from the Jedi Order. With the Jedi almost distinguished by the Sith, and as with most Bioware games, multiple paths are presented to you and it's up to you if you decide to help the Jedi or succumb to the dark side. That you can feel echoing outward. Using an updated version of the Odyssey game engine and music by Mark Grisky, who had close ties with LucasArts and would later go on to do the music for The Old Republic, the game was well received but knocked down for being buggy and felt rushed. Future patches and a fan community would fix these bugs, and if you've not played the second Knights of the Old Republic, make sure you find a copy. The story is strong with equally strong characters, highly recommended. Preparing for final approach. Whatever's causing those transmissions, it's not showing up on any of the sensors. This Imperial outpost looks as abandoned as reported. It's as dead as the rest of Ketchum. Mon Mothma must be getting paranoid. She never used to send pros like us out on blue milk runs like this. Kyle, Jam, greetings. Mon Mothma, Kyle was just talking about you. No doubt. Released in 2002, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast was a first and third person single and multiplayer game, and it takes the runner up spot in our top 10. You played Kyle Katan, who battled the Dark Jedi Disan, featuring an all star cast including Star Wars Rebels Vanessa Marshall and Mr. Cool himself, Billy D. Williams, as Lando. These are probably already stripped it for parts by now. What about Jan? Jan's not with me on this one. You two have had another one of your fights, haven't you? Well, come on, let's go. You can buy us some flowers on Besman. The game features a whole host of weapons, but focuses on lightsaber combat, with huge lightsaber duels taking place a number of times throughout the game. Force powers were available too, such as jump, push, and the very satisfying lightning. After almost falling to the dark side, Kyle Katan decides to give up his force, hanging up his lightsaber in favour of a good old-fashioned blaster. But when a new and menacing threat to the galaxy begins to emerge, Kyle knows he must reclaim his past in order to save his and everyone's future. The game boasts a hugely entertaining single player campaign as well as multiplayer options. The visuals still look impressive and Jedi Knight 2 is definitely worth playing. The game is available on PC and Mac as well as consoles Xbox and GameCube. Remember those experiments on Kedjim with the Artusian crystals? With the valley of the Jedi's power coursing through those crystals, Dasan has succeeded in infusing his troops with the power of the Force. Wake this pathetic planet from the face of the galaxy. With me, get on those gun turrets. Bring her 
similar to me. All Republic forces pull back! It is too late to retreat, Admiral. There is no escape for us. You are strong, child. But I will break you. I'll never fall to the dark side. This is but a taste of the dark side. And coming in at number one by some margin, and no surprise, it's the 2003 Bioware game Knights of the Old Republic. With a gripping storyline, nice looking visuals and music by Jeremy Soule, who has been described as the John Williams of video games, it's easy to see why this is number one. Knights of the Old Republic is set approximately 4,000 years before the rise of the Galactic Empire. Dark Lord of the Sith and a former Jedi, Darth Malak, along with Darth Reavens, former apprentice, has unleashed a Sith armada against the Republic. The Jedi now vulnerable consider allegiance for Malak. The game begins with you on board a Republic ship that is under attack by Malak. You escape and as the game continues you gain companions and improve powers to stop Malak. You learn to become a Jedi and travel numerous planets to find the location of Malak and his military resources. The character screen allows you to customise the look of your character and you can choose between being a male or a female in the game. The game is packed with dialogue and you decide the answers and reactions to most of the conversations. This, along with your other actions, determines your alignment. Give more aggressive answers or actions and you align more with the dark side, unlocking those particular powers, only available to that path. The same for the light side of the force, show more generosity and compassion and the game takes you on a whole different path than gameplay. Even the appearance of your character changes depending on your actions. This makes repeat playing essential, and if you've completed the game, it's worth going back and playing again, as it's most likely to take you on a whole different path. The game contains 300 characters and approximately 15,000 lines of speech. A cast of 100 voice actors were used for the game. Listen out for Star Trek Voyager's Ethan Phillips in the game. They swarmed out and over us. There was no way we could stop them. So we ran. But hardly any of us made it. I locked the door behind us, but... But the others had already left in the submersible. The sharks, the Feroxa out there, and worse. I heard an explosion shortly after the submersible left. They didn't make it. Just food for the sharks and the Selkath. Like us. Now the combat is round based, giving the player time to think about tactics and the best course of action. It also makes the game accessible to all, including those who wouldn't normally play a first or third person shooter. If you love Star Wars, then you must play this RPG. This is essential viewing and essential playing. If you own an iPad or an iPhone, then good news for you, as the game is available on the App Store. Knights of the Republic takes our number one spot, and well deserved it is too. So there's your top 10 Star Wars video games as voted for by you. An excellent choice and I definitely want to go back and play all of them. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the Coffee with Kenobi website for the latest on Star Wars and packed with guest posts and blogs. You can also check them out on Facebook and they're also on Twitter too. Also tune in to their podcast too. This is definitely the podcast you've been looking for. Also check out thebeardedtrio.com for the latest on Spielberg, George Lucas and John Williams. Updated daily on all the latest of the three, including Lucasfilm, Industrial Light of Magic, Falling Sky, Star Wars and so much more. We also have a Facebook and Twitter page too, so come and join the party. And you can also let us know if we've missed one of your favourite Star Wars games. Thanks again, happy gaming and may the force be with you all.